it's a pretty broad area, artificial intelligence. But if we focus on how businesses are using natural language processing and machine learning, uh, as uh, right now, it's, it's really in processing huge amounts of data. It's increasing the, the aperture of data <coughs> that we can start applying um, computing power to draw out intelligent insight. I think we're going to see the integration of IoT, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and mixed reality, so virtual reality, augmented reality. At the intercept between those three technology um, sort of mega trends, we're going to see huge creativity. These are um, uh, destined to become consumer facing robots, um, and they're what we call companion robots in that they don't physically assist you. The, the situation is not um, to try and look after people, but to enable people to look after themselves. Everything digital is becoming more and more personalized, right? Whether it's the ads that you see online or the songs that you're served on uh, Spotify or the books that Amazon suggests that you buy. And I think that that will become more and more hyper individual. So my, you know, one of my favorite bands is Queens of the Stone Age. Maybe in the future, my Queens of the Stone Age experience will be completely different from another super fan's experience. So I think there's tons of stuff, you know, the imagination kind of goes all over the place on all that stuff. But I think what is really clear is um, it's like p word one, line one, chapter one of this massive book that will probably take a, you know, lifetimes to fully explore. I want to have an AI, whatever you want to call it, intelligent, uh, sentient person in my computer tells me, Paul, these are the three emails you should, you should read now, the rest you can discard. This already kind of exists, there are some filters, et cetera, but I want that because I want to simplify my life and focus on what I'm good at, maybe creativity. And you, you, you want these things to happen to you because this what liberates us as human. You don't want to be, again, the guy who does, or the woman who does very repetitive jobs. We will invent jobs because that's what we do as human beings in the next 10, 15, 50 years that will be totally different. That us will be looking at it, this is not a job, but it is, and I think we, have, we ought to be positive about that. So yes, it will take over, but it's a good thing. So I wrote a book called Robo Apocalypse, which after about like the seventh or eighth syllable of the title, you can kind of figure out what it's about. But my goal with Robo Apocalypse was to acknowledge this fear that people have and then to subvert it during the story. The instant something becomes real, a technology becomes real, it becomes mundane. We don't care anymore. So it can be an amazing thing like speech recognition, where we, we had, you know, or, or these little guys per, performing slams. So they're doing simultaneous localization and mapping, which is an amazing thing 10 years ago. And now no one cares. We just assume that, that this is part of our lives and it's something that machines can do. So people are very hard to please, I think. And, and as we put these machines into our lives, I think we're going to start to form relationships with them and maybe come to appreciate them. But, but we've got to see them in physical uh, incarnations and, we, and we've got to see the usefulness from interacting with them. Um, and I think that slowly our, our perceptions will change over time. Well, is it possible to see the results of that poll at the beginning where I asked what you would trust robots to do? Is that, aha. Here we, oh, look, a lovely bar chart. I do like a nice <laughs> bar chart. The irony <laughs> is that, you know, of all those things you put there, the easiest thing for the robot to do is to cut your hair because it's a repeatable task and it's much easier to program a ro robot to do that <laughs> than to cook your dinner, for instance, or certainly look after your children. But um, there we are. Well, well that's, the, that's the thing, isn't it? Is that maybe there's a mismatch between what robots are able to easily do and what we actually want them to do. You think, what's the last thing a human can do? It's actually experience life as a human. Right? And this is valuable. You think about James Frey's book, A Million Little Things, right? That, was, that book was great. It was selling a million copies. Oprah loved it. And then they found out that it wasn't a, a, a true representation of his actual experience as a, living as a human being. It was a fabrication. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, nobody likes the book. The words didn't change. It's the same book. It has no value now. And so you, you realize, I look at all this social media stuff that we're doing. We're being trained to entertain each other with the minutia of our lives. But it only matters if you really had that wonderful meal and you ate it and experienced it as a human, or if you really gave birth to those children that are obviously adorable, you know, and like and you're sharing pictures and minutia of your life. 
And all of that gains its value from the fact that it's an experience that a human being had, and that's the only thing that the robots can, hopefully can never take away from us.